In today's video, we are going to solve simple problems on magnetic circuits. So let's start off with this simple example. Example 1. Calculate the MMF or the magnetomotive force required to produce a flux of 0.015 Webers across an air gap of 2.5 mm long having an effective area of 200 cm square. So from this question, we are giving the magnetic flux to be 0.015 Webers and then the length of the air gap to be 2.5 millimeters long as well as the area or the effective area to be 200 centimeter square and we are asked to find the MMF across the air gap. Now to find the MMF across the air gap, let's first of all convert this value from millimeters to meters and also the effective area from centimeter square to meter square. Now if you want to convert the value of L from millimeter to meters, then you basically multiply this value by 10 to the power negative 3. So that becomes 2.5 times 10 exponent negative 3 and that will be in meters and then also for the cross-sectional area or the effective area we know that 1 centimeter square is equal to 10 exponent negative 4 meter square so we basically multiply this value by 10 to the power negative 4 so that becomes 200 times 10 exponent negative 4 and that will be in meter square so now let's try to find the MMF now from the question we are given the magnetic flux we have the length of the air gap and then we also have the cross-sectional area or the effective area now from the information we have here we can first of all find the magnetic flux density which is given as B and that is equal to the magnetic flux divided by the effective area. Now we have the magnetic flux given as 0 0.015 and then we divide that by the effective area which is 200 times 10 exponent negative 4. Now 0 0.015 divided by 200 times 10 exponent negative 4 gives 0 0.75. Therefore, we have the magnetic flux density to be 0 0.75 Tesla. Now also focusing on this question, you realize that our aim is to find the MMF across the air gap. Now because we are dealing with an air gap, we need to consider the relation or the equation that relates the magnetic flux density to the magnetic field intensity considering free space or vacuum. So that is given by B equals mu naught times H where mu naught is the permeability of free space or vacuum and that is giving us 4 pi times 10 exponent negative 7 Webers per amperes meter. Now from this, we can find the magnetic field intensity. So that is giving us magnetic flux density divided by mu naught. We have B to be 0 0.75 divided by mu naught which is 4 pi times 10 exponent negative 7 and that is equal to 
we are going to have 596,831. So this is the value of each. Now since we have the value of h, then using the relation h equals f divided by l, we can find the value of the MMF. So f, which is the magnetomotive force, is equal to the magnetic field intensity times the length of the air gap. So we have h to be 596,831 times the length of the air gap which is 2.5 times 10 exponent negative 3. Now multiplying these two values we are going to get 1,492 amperes or better still ampere things. So that is the value of the magnetomotive force across an air gap of 2.5 millimeters long. Now let's move on as we solve the next example. So to example two, a coil of 500 tens is wound uniformly over a wooden ring having a mean circumference of 600 millimeters and a uniform cross-sectional area of 500 millimeter square. Now, if the current through the coil is 10 amperes, calculate A, the magnetic field strength, B, the flux density, and then C, the total flux. So from the question, we have a coil of 500 tens. So the number of tens of the coil is 500 and then we have the mean circumference of the wooden ring to be 600 millimeters so that is going to be the mean length of the magnetic circuit so that's 600 millimeters now converting this value to meters we basically multiply that by 10 exponents negative 3 so that becomes 600 times 10 exponent negative 3 and that is equal to 0 0.6 meters and then we have the cross-sectional area giving us 500 millimeter square also converting this value to meter square we multiply by 10 exponent negative 6 so 1 millimeter square is equal to 10 exponent negative 6 meter square so that becomes 500 times 10 exponent negative 6 meter square and then we have the current in the coil to be 10 amperes so a let's try to find the magnetic field strength or better still the magnetic field intensity h So the magnetic field intensity or the magnetic field strength H is giving us the magnetomotive force divided by the length of the magnetic circuit. And then we know that the MMF F can also be expressed as the current I in the core times the number of things of the core. Now we have I to be 10 amperes. And then we have n to be 500. Ten times 500 divided by L, which is 0 0.6, gives 8,333.33 amperes. Per meter so that is the value for each the magnetic field strength 
Now let's move on to B, where we are asked to find the magnetic flux density. Now considering this question, we have a non-magnetic material, which is a wooden ring. So we can use the equation that relates the magnetic flux density P to the magnetic field intensity, that is B equals mu naught times H where this equation applies to free space or non-magnetic materials. Now we know that mu naught is giving us 4 pi times 10 exponent negative 7. And the unit is Weber's per amperes meter. So let's try to find the value of the magnetic flux density. So that is giving us 4 pi times 10 exponent negative 7 times the value of h, which is 8,333.33. Now multiplying these two values, you are going to get 0 0.010. 4, 7. And then we can simplify this as now moving three decimal places to the right, we have 1, 2, 3. So that becomes 10.47 milli Tesla. So that is the value of the magnetic flux density. Now let's move on to C. For C, we are going to find the total flux. Now, the magnetic flux density is giving us the flux divided by the cross-sectional area. So, if we want to find the flux in this case, or the total flux in this case, then that is giving us the magnetic flux density times the cross-sectional area. Now, we have the value of B to be 10.47 and because of the milli that is 10 exponent negative 3 times a which is giving us 500 times 10 exponent negative 6 so multiplying these two values you are going to get 5.235 times 10 exponent negative 6 and then simplifying this value we have 5.235 micro webis so basically this is the total flux in the circuit so that's it for today's video thanks for watching and see you in my next video bye bye